Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today I'm so happy to share with you all the different DIY projects I have lined up for Halloween of this year utilizing all Dollar Tree items. So for this first one we are going to be making Halloween decorative plates using these rub-on transfers that I picked up from the Dollar Tree store. I would highly recommend for you to pick up extra packages just in case because once they are gone they're gone. You're also going to need a plate, your choice, whether it be square or round, but I would highly recommend for you to stick with the white so your designs will show up. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree dishware section. First thing first, we're going to go ahead and open up the packaging and cut out the designs so we can lay them out on the plate and figure out what works best. I've already washed these dishes beforehand, but I'm also going to take this alcohol swab and just clean the plates just to make sure I get all the residue off for better adherence. And I'm going to start off with, but then my daughter will finish the design. So this is the design I've chosen to go with so far. I may remove a few of the things, but I'm gonna start off with the bats and I'm going to simply carefully peel it off. Make sure you don't touch the image. Line it up to the place that you'd like to put the bat. And then you're going to rub it with your finger until the image has completely adhered to the plate. You want to rub it, especially the small areas, the detailed areas like the bats and wings, the ears. You want to make sure you rub it a few times. Very good. Let's see if we need to rub it anymore. And then you're going to carefully peel it from one of the ends. snaps back. So the ear needs to rub and so does this part. So I'm going to do that again. Helps with the nail too. Over so carefully. And you have your image. I continued the same process with all the different designs and this is what it came out to be. I love the way that this came out. It is so beautiful, so good. I love the vintage vibes going on and it only took about 15 minutes. The first couple ones were just, you know, getting used to it but then it just went by so quickly and I love, love how this came out. You can definitely Mod Podge this and just seal it up, but of course this is just purely for decorative reasons. I would not recommend for eating or anything like that, but um, make sure you make a couple of them and you can put it on a mantle, put it on a table, a side table, whatever you'd like. Gave this orange pumpkin one to my daughter to do and she loved it. It really brought out her creativity. Next up, I'm going to be making a Halloween chandelier using these garden decors from Dollar Tree. First step is to make a circle wreath using the pool noodle and for that I'm utilizing the zip ties by bringing the two ends together and then I'm going to reinforce it additionally with a heavy duty black tape. I would highly recommend the longer zip ties if you have the option of picking those up at the Dollar Tree versus the regular size. The seam has been reinforced with the black heavy duty tape. Now I'm going to proceed with wrapping the panels around the wreath. Line up the seam with the edge of the panel and again reinforce it by attaching it with zip ties. This is where the extra large zip ties come in handy because the ones that I had at home were the regular size and I had to put in more effort to get them zip tied.
I went ahead and basically rocked the spikes back and forth and they came apart very easily and um, I did that to all the spikes and then depending on the pressure points that you're going to have while you wrap around the pool noodle you may need to cut some off. I then brought the ends of the panels together using a glue gun to stick with the glue. Because of the pressure points, you may end up with this kind of like eyeball shape, but go ahead and just bend it around and it'll come to a circular position. I also picked up about three of these interlocking links uh, from the Dollar Tree store. They were in the same vicinity as the panels were. These work great because I took a box cutter and split open the end and it has a hole in it where I can just go ahead and hang it onto the chandelier and then re-lock it in. You can reinforce the lock by using glue as well. Now this part is completely optional. You can go ahead and make faux candlesticks to basically go onto the chandelier and you can do that by marking the height of the uh, candlestick that you like to have and then um, I'm just simply using a paper towel roll here and I'm just going to use a box cutter, cut that open and then I'm going to be using a glue gun to kind of indicate like it's melted wax going down the faux candlestick which I will proceed with painting and then putting a tea light in there. Now that is an optional choice. I'm going to also show you another option for this project which I actually preferred over the candlestick so I went with that. If you choose to do the faux candlesticks uh, using the paper towel rolls you can easily do this by putting a hole through either end of the roll and basically sliding in a zip tie in there. This is to hold the tea light so it doesn't fall down and then cut off the excess. This additional part will then be hidden by the glue gun that we're going to use to mimic melted candle wax. This is what it looks like after I was done using the glue gun to mimic melted wax and then I'm going to paint over this. You can paint the faux candlestick any color you'd like. I'm going for a light yellow color. Black is also an option. You may need a couple coats depending on the type of paint that you're using to cover the candlestick. This second option is to pick up two packages of the LED lights that the Dollar Tree carries. They carry the orange and uh, the purple. I picked up one of each just to give you an idea of what it looks like with each of those colors on the chandelier. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking the hot glue gun and pressing it against where the eye socket is. And this is just going to melt the plastic so I'm going to put through the LED lights and it's going to look awesome. You can't see it now but the plastic has melted. I'm just going to go ahead and open that hole a little bit more using scissors since the plastic is hot. And this is going to give me that hole that I can actually put through the LED lights. And I'm just going to go through the panels and do that for each skeleton. The light bulbs worked out perfectly because I was using two of the bulbs per skeleton and then the third one I was just bringing it over and attaching it to the corner where the bone area is or the corner bone area is I should say and then the other two were going to the other skeleton next to the one that I already streamed the lights for so um, it had a very nice pattern going to it and the wires were not showing at all because I was able to hide it behind the panels. So here is how I strung up the lights. I did the two per skeleton and then the third one would go to the corner and then another two per skeleton the third one would go to the corner and then these are the battery packs for the LED lights. Make sure when you do put it on you put it on facing up. Um, I guess up where the screw is so that if you need to change the battery it's easily accessible. Because this project had so many pressure points I decided to alleviate it by using another paper towel roll. I'm going to paint it black and as you can see it fits just perfectly very snug 
and it creates a rounder effect. I wanted to show you what it would look like with the faux candle so you want to place it on top of the pool noodle on the corners where it would look best and again it's completely up to you you can do both the LED lights with the faux candles or you can do one over the other I'm going to choose the LED lights for myself I'm going to paint the paper towel roll black so it does not show in the project I also chose to do a creepy cloth effect on the bottom of the chandelier so I'm simply going to stuff this in between the pool noodle and the panels so that it will keep well. You don't even have to attach this with glue if you choose not to so it's really optional. You can leave it open-ended where you can use this for another project as well. Here's what it looks like from the inside but you're not going to see this because we have the creepy cloth to hide all this. And here is the final product guys. I am so happy as to how this came out. I cannot even explain. This is beyond what I was expecting. I love the addition of the LED lights. I feel like this is what makes the piece pop so much. I did it in the purple and the orange just to give you an idea of the look. And the creepy cloth really ties it all together. Here is a super easy way to make a crystal ball for Halloween. I picked up a straw light from the Halloween decor section and my store already had the Christmas ornaments out as well. I picked up one of these plastic ornaments, pulled out the hook, I'm simply going to glue it on top of the straw light and there you have it. When you turn it on, especially when it's dark, the straw light starts to flicker and it creates a nice effect. How cool does that look? Next step, I'm going to be making a hologram crystal ball. For this, you're going to be needing a round base, a bowl from the party center area, and this comes in a pack of four, face shield, rub-on transfers, Halloween themed, paint of your choice, I'm going to go with black, and your glue gun. So what you want to do is cut your face shield in a kind of like a square shape, maybe a little bit longer than a square, kind of like a rectangle, either or will work, but you want it to fit snug into the vase. Once I'm satisfied with the shape and how well it fits into the vase, I'm going to take my rub-on transfers and start lining it up so it is centered and I'm going to rub it on and transfer the image onto the little plastic piece. After the image has been centered, you want to rub over the image, especially the detailed areas, many times to make sure all of the image will release from the original transfer sheet onto the little plastic piece. Peel back the plastic transfer sheet very carefully, and if you have any details that did not transfer, carefully put it back and continue rubbing the area that has not transferred until all of the image has transferred onto the little plastic. This is what it looks like when I have it in the vase over the little bowl with the straw light underneath. It has a wonderful hologramic effect. Since I had quite a few of the rub-on transfers left over along with the face shield plastic, I'm going to create additional inserts to give me different options. I also put one of the rub-on transfers onto the vase itself. This gave it additional dimension. I'm going to paint the party bowl that I picked up black. This is going to act the base of the crystal ball. I'm going to paint it from the inside versus the outside because if I want to change the inserts out, I don't want the paint to peel off as I'm changing it. And I'm going to leave the middle part unpainted so that the light can shine through. I also started to experiment as to how the look is going to come out if I use the wrapper itself that the face shield came in and I actually like it better believe it or not because it's thinner plastic it's less visible when you put it into the base so it comes out with better results by all means if you have thin plastic that is not so flexible but it's sturdy enough for you to transfer the image onto go ahead and use that. This one is my favorite. It has the haunted house with the ghosts coming out of it. This came out so good. It looks so much better in person than the camera is able to capture. And I'm going to show you a quick scene of what it looks like in the dark.
This one also came out great and I really love all of them so it's really hard to choose. And here is the cat with the cauldron, so cute. Next I'm going to show you how to make a floating crystal ball using a mason jar candle holder, a Christmas ornament and LED lights from the Dollar Tree. First I'm going to take out the candle holder from the mason jar, that's the only portion we're going to use for this project. You can leave the mason jar to the side or use it for a different project. And then I'm going to take the hook out of the ornament, place it upside down in the candle holder and then I'm going to stream these LED lights inside the ornament. I left the lights in the bundle as they came out of the packaging. This helped me out putting it into the ornament. To hide the wiring, I'm simply going to wrap the battery pack along one of the rods and this will disguise it. Place the ornament hook back in its place and this will hold in the wiring. Then take a creepy cloth and disguise the rods holding the ball up and make sure you leave room in the middle. Alright guys, this turned out so great. I'm so happy the way this turned out. And it was just the product of a couple of things lying around the house. I was just playing around with it to see what I can do. And I thought this would be such a cool turnout if it did work, and it did. The best part is you can change up the lights and it completely looks like it's levitating. I see in your future, you're going to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. Next up, I'm going to be doing a wonderful Halloween accent piece that you can hang around the house just to add up more flair to your Halloween decor. For this, you're going to need a picture frame and a card from the Halloween aisle. I chose this picture frame with sequences in there for added fun. You can also choose to paint the frame depending on the color that you choose. I'm simply going to rip off the backing of the frame and take out the pieces so that I can customize it to fit my project. We're going to save most of these pieces so we can use it again in the project. Next I'm going to remove any lettering with some nail polish remover. If your frame has these styrofoam pieces, make sure you save those as well. Now I'm going to paint my frame black so that it's more fitting for the theme. Then I'm going to cut the card to fit the frame. I'm simply placing the glass piece over the card to see what part of the card I want to keep and what part of the card I'd like to cut off. Now I'm going to wipe the glass clean, put the sequences back, followed by the card, basically rebuilding the frame back. I put small bits of glue inside the frame so I can put back the styrofoam pieces to support the frame and the picture. I'm putting small dollops of glue onto the cardboard piece so that I can stick the card onto the cardboard. Finally, I'm going to seal up the frame with some additional glue and place the ribbon back and it's good to go. Now 
This project came out so adorable. It was super easy, super quick, less than 10 minutes we had it done, but all the while it was very fun. The kiddos especially will enjoy doing this project with a grown up. At the Dollar Tree, they had these humongous, gigantic eyes. I thought, what can I do with this? So a few projects came to mind, but I wanted my friend Frankie to have some fun in the action with Halloween as well. Frankie was not doing so good because he had been under a thunderstorm and suffered some damages, but he's under recovery. Um, he liked the costume, I think, but I'm not entirely certain because he looks kind of angry. But anyways, Frankie enjoyed it, I think, and so, um, yeah, it was super fun doing this too. Next up, I'm going to be doing a Day of the Dead skeleton head decorative. You can put this on the reef or on the mantle, whatever you'd like, but it's everywhere. I think it's trending because of Coco. Have you guys seen that movie? I love it. My kids love it too. Super fun to watch and very creative, might I say, but what I did is I took one of the Dollar Tree skulls and painted it completely white. I'm taking my inspiration from this ribbon. I am going to paint it white and then do kind of the cheekbone features, highlight it with black. And by all means, you do not have to be super neat with this. That's another thing that I love about this project. It's very forgiving. So if you're not artistic whatsoever, you barely paint or anything like that, this is a good project to start off with because you, you can't really do wrong. So what I'm doing is I'm simply highlighting the eye sockets, the gum areas, and the cheekbones with some black to give it a nice contrast. From the Dollar Tree, I picked up a bunch of these wonderful stick-on jewels. They have it in the craft area. Each store has different colors and different varieties, so make sure you check those aisles when you go. I also picked up these fake eyelashes because I think it's going to look super cute when we put the eyelashes on there too. Also, um, it kind of fits the theme with Coco as well. So. Here we go, we're gonna go ahead and kind of decide on the design that is best fitting to the skeleton. And again, this part, you don't really even have to be artistic. You just have to know some colors, some patterns. That's the pattern I'm going to do in the eye socket here. And so I can change it up and it's super friendly because it's not going to, it's not like a permanent glue on the back. It's like a sticker glue. So you can peel it off if you like if you're not happy with the design. I went ahead and stuck these on. They do take some time. It is somewhat tedious because they're small to hold. I do recommend using tweezers if you have them. And after I finalized my design, I went ahead and put small bits of glue on the back so that I can fixate it onto the skeleton and it's not going to fall off. I then took a dry brush and just brushed off the excess strings from the glue gun just to make it a little bit neater. I then proceeded with fixating the lashes onto the sockets of the eye of the skeleton head and this just brought it up to life and again circling back to Kako, I remember his aunts had the long big eyelashes in there. I thought it was the most hilarious thing and it was super cute so we wanted to mimic that. Now I'm going to pick up this other piece of sticker sheet that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go ahead and build a pattern on top of the forehead and kind of elaborate with the different colors from there on forward. I highly recommend for you to pick up these string gems whenever you're in a DT store because they're so versatile and you can do so much with it and they're super easy to use. You can cut it by hand or with scissors where you want it to be cut and look how elaborate this looks and that portion took me pretty much like a couple minutes just to do. Now we're going to go ahead and dress Rosita up with some flowers. I picked up all these florals from the DT store again. Different parts. Some were, uh, I believe, in the floral department and some were in the Halloween department. I chose to go with this blood red roses. I think it's so fitting to the occasion with the Day of the Dead. And she looks gorgeous with those on her head. I did a band of roses on the very top of her head and then I added some black tulle on the back of her head to add additional character.
This came out so spot on with the Day of the Dead theme. I love how stunning it looks. The jewels really made it easy to work with and uh, you can really be creative with the jewels because there's so many different variations, so many different colors that you can choose from. You can really express the colors that you are going to have for a themed party or something like that. So give this one a try if you do comment down below and tell me what you liked. Let's jump into the next DIY project. We are going to be making a garland for Halloween using these cutouts from felt. So there's different variations you can buy at the Dollar Tree store. We are simply going to take these and put it on a glitter ribbon that I bought from the Dollar Tree Halloween decor section. And that's pretty much how easy it is. These cutouts also have little, um, I guess, pieces that you have to take out first. So you have the negative and the positive spaces for the patterns. So we have the pumpkin, we have the ghost, the bat, and the cat. The ghosts and the pumpkins are the ones that you have the additional pieces to take out, but it's super easy. Again, all you need is a hot glue gun and a piece of ribbon, and you have a wonderful garland made for $4 because each little design has its own packaging, so they were not all in one package or anything like that. So here we go, I'm just putting small dabs of glue where I want the patterns to stick on the ribbon and I'm just spacing it out by eyeballing it, that's pretty much it. This is also a wonderful project to do with the kiddos, especially be careful with the glue gun if you do that. So uh, make sure you have adult supervision at all times and this will make for a fun project to work together. I love how adorable this turned out. It was so simple to make. You can definitely dress this up with additional ribbons and colors to fit the home decor. Next, I'm going to be filling in these apothecary jars that I picked up from the Dollar Tree store. These were absolutely the best find for Halloween, I feel like. I'm very into apothecary jars and I love the apothecary labels. And the fact that these jars are already colored and have the apothecary labels on there is an extra bonus. So I love that. We're going to go ahead and start off with the, some of the decorations here. So I'm going to use some of these small skeletons. I'm going to be using these confetti tubes that I found at the craft store alongside with some spider webs. I find the easiest way to pour the confetti tube into anything is to snip off a small piece of the end and then just slowly pour it into whatever you want to pour it into. The labels on the bottles were super creative. So the witch's brew says, since 1692, potion number 666, brewed with only the finest all natural ingredients in the grand tradition of Salem's finest witches. Super cute. So that one I just filled up with the confetti tubes and that was it for that one. I thought it added a nice glittery touch to the potion bottle. And then we have the unfiltered uh, green bottle. So that one says since 1778, witches grade keep chilled poison, fine mix of bone dust, gnomes, toes, and dragon saliva. This one I also chose to do the confetti um, tubes just because I had it very handy and I want to use this for another DIY but you can definitely fill this up with some flour so that could be kind of like the crushed bones. And then we have the dark purple bottle which says wool of bat magic rehydrate bats wool in warm milk since 1559. So cute. I filled that one up with spider webs or you can also do cotton balls to resemble like wool and milk, what have you. Be creative with this. You can hardly see it through, um, so I would say do something light colored. And finally, we have the orange bottle which is the zombies brew fermented zombie toes and fingers 1902. I think this one came out so good because what I did is I again put in the confetti tubes and then I cut off the arms and the legs of the small skeletons I showed you from the garland earlier in the video and I stuck those in there and when you shake it up the arms and legs kind of stick up so it makes it look awesome. 
I had these decorative little hats I picked up from the Halloween Dollar Tree section and they were actually picks but I took off the picks and I put the hats on the very top of the bottle and they came out so adorable. This is just something different you can do if you want to, it's completely optional. Oh my gosh guys, this came out so wonderful. I love every little aspect about this. The fact that I didn't even have to bother with printing labels, getting them on there, you know, finding labels in the first place to put on there is wonderful. This literally took minutes to make and it came out gorgeous. It's so wonderful to have something like this around your home for your Halloween decor as accent pieces as well. Or you can have little corners of themes going on around your home and I want to show you really quickly the zombie legs and feet you see them sticking out in there so freaking cute and just in case if you decide to do the hats on the bottles this is what it would look like so for this next project I'm going to call it the web of lies. I was thinking about doing something with webs and nothing was coming to mind but web of lies. And then I went to Home Goods and Marshalls and I saw a few different statues with hear no evil, see no evil, talk no evil theme um, kind of things. And then I said, you know what, that's probably a good one to do. So I'm going to position these little skeletons in the domes as hear no evil, speak no evil, talk no evil or <laughs> see no evil, hear no evil, talk no evil kind of a thing. And this would be kind of what they were guilty of. And they have been cursed of what they were guilty of in that position and they died that way. So this project I thought was going to be very simple, but believe it or not, it took me a while to do because the skeleton arms have like a torque in them so when you're actually positioning it they just don't want to stay that way that alone is not enough they have this brown film all over the skeleton and uh, it slips off when you are gluing anything so basically you have a slippery foundation to work on so that's why the glue does not want to stay but um, after I got it to stay it turned out so wonderful. It came out the way I was kind of imagining it in my head, which was awesome. And um, what you want to do here is basically work with a hot glue gun. Do not do low temp glue guns at all. You can also work with E6000 uh, if you have that handy as well. Make sure you use uh, gloves not to get those on you. But um, here I am trying to position the hand and my daughter was basically my camera person and she just kept giggling and giggling because it would not stay no matter what I did. I would press on it, I would hold it into position, but then it would actually just fall apart. But that also kind of worked to my advantage because with the theme of it being web of lies and they kind of got cursed um, and the spider spun it web for them to stay in that position, uh, it worked uh, in my favor because the glue gun strings were coming off kind of like web strings it still worked for me so um, I hope you guys enjoy this portion it's um, it's an adventure getting these glued <laughs> Love her giggles. We had so much fun making this despite the challenges. 
So that is another option that you can do is just use the bottom portion of the dome and have your skeleton standing up in whatever position you want them to. But uh, I just really wanted to encompass the feeling of entrapment for the web of lies idea. And so I wanted to put him in the dome and have him situated in there. So I glued him down and then nestled Spanish moss around him and then put on the dome for him to remain in there. Then I had these little skeleton bowls that um, I wanted to use the skeleton heads off of there to top it off on the dome. These came out so great, exactly the way I had envisioned it. That's how it came out. I love it. It looks so spectacular, so high end. It would be something that you would pay way more for at a Hobby Lobby or Michael store, um, especially for the set of three. I really love this and um, if you guys try it at home, please comment down below. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you did. You could also have the skeleton standing if you choose to on the platforms of the dome, which would also be super cool. For this next project, I'm going to be doing full taxidermy gilded insects. For this project, I'm going to be using two of the toy beetles I found at the Dollar Tree toy section, two plaques at the craft section, black paint, a brush, and rustoleum metallic spray. I'm going to start off by spraying the beetles with the spray paint to let them fully dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and paint the plaques black and let them fully dry. Once everything is fully dry, I'm going to quickly assemble this by putting a large dollop of hot glue on the back of the beetle and then placing it onto the plaque. These came together so quickly, you can't even tell it's a DIY. It looks super high end. This next DIY project is super easy to do and the end result is very stunning. Dollar Tree is bringing out more and more of these laser cut designs. This one is out of wood and I love them because they are very, very nicely done. All you need is a coat of paint of your choice and it really brings out the details in them. These were so quick to come together and came out so gorgeous. I love these pieces. Next up, I will be making some specimen jars using all Dollar Tree products. You're going to need mason jars for this, some of the Dollar Tree Halloween ornaments, tea lights, I have the multicolor changing ones, and Dollar Tree is bringing in these chrome skeleton heads uh, or skulls this year. They have ones in white chrome and black chrome. I chose the white chrome for this project. So what you want to do is take the tea light and position it in such a way under the skull so that the button is easily accessible. Um, even if you do it with a toothpick, you just need to flick it on and off. That's pretty much it. But I'm just going to go ahead and position it and hot glue this so that I can uh, turn off the button whenever I want to. Next, I'm going to take one of the Halloween ornaments, particularly the one with the eyeball, and I'm going to remove the hook part of it, and then I'm going to cut off the neck. You want to exercise caution when you're doing this. This is made out of plastic. It is not glass, so it almost easily snaps off, so uh, just exercise additional caution. And then I also picked up one of these mason jar adaptable lids and this one is great for this project because it has a chain attached to it which adds additional character to the specimen jar. Next I'm going to fill up the mason jar with water. The eyeball was kind of bobbing up and down. It was not really sinking in so I had to take it to the faucet and fill it up with water as it was taking much longer for it to fill up with water when I was pushing it down with my fingers. 
Now comes the really fun part. I'm going to take some food coloring and put a couple of drops in the water so that the color will change. I love watching the coloring hit the water. It's just so mesmerizing. Give it a quick mix to evenly distribute the color. Then I'm screwing back on the chained lid and then I'm going to put the skeleton with the tea light that I made earlier in the video on top of it. You want to make sure that does not touch the water and here is what it looks like. This turned out so great. I love the look of it and I love the colors changing. It just adds another spooky vibe to it. I proceeded with making two additional mason jars same exact way and let me tell you guys collectively this looks so awesome I cannot begin to explain even if you wanted to split them up and put them in different corners of the house it's gonna look awesome I, I gotta say this totally will take up your Halloween decor to a different level and it's just so spectacular to see it I love the green tint to the water I love the changing tea lights super awesome this next project is super fun as well, very easy to do again. I am in love with the rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree store, so I found these in the Halloween aisle. It says, I'm here for the booze. Super cute. And then this next one, it says, which way to the wine? And the third one um, is going to be gals just want to have fun. I'll show you guys that in a bit, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to line up the wording first on the wine glass that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree store and then I'm going to rub those on first and then I'm going to do the ghost and finally I'm going to do the part where it says the booze um, on the bottom because of the curvature of the wine glass I can't fit it all at the same time but that's perfectly fine even if it becomes imperfect it's completely fine no need to sweat the small stuff we're just having fun with all this stuff again you want to take your time and rubbing each word and make sure you rub it several times uh, per section just to make sure you have all the details on there and when you carefully lift off the transfer paper make sure everything has been transferred if not you can just put back the transfer paper and rub back on the parts that have not transferred yet so it's very easy to do this one was super sticky I gotta say it transferred very quickly um, I think it's because it's glass and it's made specifically for glass so it made it all the easier for us to do the transfer now I'm going to work on the final part which says the booze and I'm just gonna line it up to the best that I can so that it fits the whole theme and um, transfer that on there too and you're gonna be able to see in a second there's a slight crease on the ghost I'm not gonna care about it no need to sweat the small stuff at all I honestly think imperfections really add more character to pieces and it looks more vintagey so I actually love the way it came out and now we're gonna move on to the plaques I picked up these canvases from the craft section at the Dollar Tree store. There are three per pack and I'm just going to go ahead and use one for the time being and I'm going to be using the transfers uh, that says which way to the line onto the canvas. This one actually took a little bit longer to do because it, it wasn't glass that I was transferring the image on so I had to rub it constantly for all the image to transfer onto the canvas piece. I didn't prime it, I didn't paint it. You can go for painting the background if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. I just chose to do the easiest way possible. Um, I'm going to be making these into hanging pieces and I also wanted to keep the vintage vibe going with these pieces as well. Here are the other ones I picked up. This one says gals just want to have fun and the other one says happy Halloween. I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the steps that I did before to transfer the images onto the canvases. Next I took some plain black ribbon that I also got from the Dollar Tree store and I'm going to center the canvases onto the ribbon spacing them out, eyeballing it, nothing too particular and these will be hanging vertically.
To finish off the pieces, I'm going to take the same ribbon, make bow ties, and put it on top of each piece. These turned out so adorable. They're so darling. I love the way that they look. I love the vintage vibes again. With the ghost one, I had to take a little bit of a pen and kind of outline it so it's more visible. But all in all, super excited about how it turned out. This next one is another favorite of mine. I will be showing you how to make a wizard gnome using all Dollar Tree products. For this, we're going to need a party hat, any size will do, some felt from the craft section in Dollar Tree, as well as a mop head, specifically the one with the strings, and then a package of the pom-poms. I'm going to be using the green from the pom-poms packaging, and of course, your trusty glue gun. You also want to pick up one of these witches hats from the Dollar Tree store. I made this one using all the Dollar Tree products as well, with the exception of the beard. The beard is full fur that I went to the Michaels um, craft store and picked that up. And the hat is just going to make it all the easier for you. So what you want to do is take apart the party hat, especially the little uh, glittery strings that they have attached. I'm not sure what they're called. I'm so sorry But you want to take that part off and also cut the top off so that you have pretty much a blank slate to work with Next I'm going to place the witch's hat back onto the cone and this is so I can plan where the beard is gonna go where the nose is gonna go and what part of the cone I'm going to be working on now we're going to go ahead and take the black felt, or any color will do, and I'm going to wrap it around the cone to see how much of a drape effect I want, if any, and also how it's going to sit on the comb. The best part about this is that the cone could be taken apart and put back together again because it is made out of um, very, very light cardboard. And so you just want to trim according to the size of the cone and uh, this makes it all the more easier because there's no math involved, there's no little templates involved or anything like that. You're just ready to go by cutting around the little opened cone. I went ahead and left a little bit more room for the bottom portion while I was cutting out the felt so it was not to size with the cardboard just to see how much of a drape effect if any I want to keep and you're going to see all this jagged edges which I will be trimming it down to make it straighter and uh, you keep in mind a lot of it is going to be covered with the beard and also the hat. I'm just straightening up the corners here and then I'm going to take the cone and put small dabs of glue and glue the felt to the cone and uh, basically see how it looks. For the back end, you wanna take the felt and fold it over a little bit, glue it down, and this will give you a clean seam. If any part of the felt is not sitting snug to the cone, you can go ahead and glue it down again because it's going to be covered with most likely the hat or the beard. Okay, now I'm going to open up the mop head and what we're going to do is use the strings as the beard. So you want to take a pair of sharp scissors and cut each string and then we're going to go ahead and glue the strings on to the cone slash felt and it's going to create the beard of the wizard. After you have a good amount cut, you're going to take the cone and 
basically do dabs of glue on the felt and start gluing the beard down to the height that you want it to be. Exercise caution when doing this because the glue can burn you. What you want to do is when you're gluing down the beard, Keep in mind you want kind of like an A effect starting from the top where the point of the A is and then going down to the bottom where it kind of fans out. You want that type of an effect with the beard. So you're not going to be gluing everything down the same size or the same area. You want it to kind of fan out on the bottom so you have a better effect. I put the head back on to see if the height is doing okay because you can have different heights of the strings attached there to give it a little bit more interest and then um, you want to make sure that the hat is hitting the point that it's supposed to cover the beard. Next I'm going to take each string and twist it the opposite way where it's actually spun. Um, this is going to unspin the strings and it's going to give it a fuller effect and a better effect. After I'm satisfied with the amount of beard I have on there, I'm going to lightly glue the gnome nose on there using one of the green pom-poms and I'm doing it like glue on there just to see if I need to adjust anything I can and you want to make sure that it hits right underneath where the hat is. Now this part is optional. You can go ahead and make the arms or the sleeves of this wizard with just felt, but I feel like it looks better when I do this step and that is I take some pipe cleaners and I twist it together. I took three of them uh, and twisted it together and then I'm going to shape it into kind of like an L shape, giving it some um, variance with the height so that the arm is a little bit longer than the hand and we're gonna go ahead and create the sleeve on top of this so that the hand becomes bendable it's not just straight up and down sitting there with felt hanging from it I made two of those one for each side and now we're gonna go ahead and create the sleeves for the wizard using the felt. You don't need much uh, of felt for this as well. Um, you just want to create a cone shape again where the pointed end is going to be the upper arm and then the wider end is going to be the sleeves where it rests on the wrists. Once you are satisfied with the shape and the height, go ahead and glue it down from the upper arm area. I'm going to put some of the green pom-poms as its hand. Repeat the same process for the second arm. See how adorable he is? Here he is, all finished, dressed up, ready to go trick-or-treating. I don't know what's more adorable, guys. This one or the second one that I had already made but he is so cute and he was so easy to make, especially with all Dollar Tree products. And this little one is conjuring up some spells. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Share this video with a family or a friend. Hit the like button and comment down below. All these things will help me out, grow the channel. And thank you so much for watching. See you back soon.